Greetings, welcome back to Random Tronic. My name is Chris and today I feel like taking something apart. And the subject of today's teardown is something that I've got right here. It's fairly heavy, it's reasonably large and it's this. It's a wee balance board. So I'm sure this was done a million times already but I haven't seen one before uh, taken apart so I'm interested to see what's going to be inside. I suspect that there will be four load cells in each corner under each feet because you can see those feet are movable so this is where it detects how much weight is in on each corner and that's how it detects all your position and how are you standing on it and so on yeah the, this balance board is going to be a one-way journey and here it is as you can see it's a fairly large item so it doesn't even fit properly into the shot it will cover the entire thing if I put it like this now uh, we balance board RVL-021 uh, max 150 kilos 23 stone 8 pounds not legal for trade this essentially is just a scale or four, four scales that get the data from each to a central uh, computer some sort of microcontroller and that sends out the, the data to we and then on, based on that it's able to position how are you standing on it whether you're tilting front back left right and and so on here is the battery compartment and this one has been equipped with a rechargeable battery pack normally you just put four um, double a's in here this one this is still good so i guess i can keep that there's just uh, nickel metal hydride cells in there first i think what i'll do is take the take one of those corners off and see if that reveals anything and here we go i've unscrewed the screws uh, they're just self tappers and voila okay so here what we have let me just see if i can get the angle right here is a load cell so what this is is this is bearing the entire weight that's on the board and you can see on this side it's been mounted to to the board itself and then it goes like this and this side is mounted to the bottom of the foot if you stand on it it tries to bend that little material um, a little bit uh, this is of course not bending but yeah you get the idea it will if you do something like that it will start bending and that bending force on the load cell changes its param electrical parameters so we'll have a look at that there's four wires going into it so it might be the bridge configuration without further ado let's see if this lifts oh yes it does no latches no anything so Tada! Okay, we have a well. We have a lot of metal. Here is a switch. Uh, lots of wires that go to all the load cells, and a PCB in here. Okay, at first glance, looking at this, this has been very well engineered. I mean, just look at the amount of steel in this, and this is no thin uh, sheet metal. This is relatively thick. All of it is, is really thick. Some the thinner parts are and uh, what looks like two millimeter uh, steel shaped in a press and uh, yeah the thicker ones are look like probably four millimeters or so and yeah really well made. Every everywhere where the wires are going through there is a rubber grommet to prevent the wires from scratching or being cut on it and every bundle of wires is really nicely heat shrunk um, every 10 centimeters or so and what it looks like is color coded so we've got black gray yellow and white different color codes for different uh, corners so it's for for easy assembly i guess we've got a little bluetooth module and the control board over here just held with a one screw here is a switch assembly that's just a plastic molding with a switch and led now, an interesting thing what I've discovered, uh, the battery holder, which is here, there is six wires going to it. So look, there is black, grey, two whites, one red and one blue one. And why would that be? I mean, it's a battery holder, you need two wires for the battery. But yes, there is the sync button here, so okay, maybe one more to pull something down to ground or to VCC, or maybe give it two separate wires for the for the switch that's four wires still there are six wires in here and when I lifted this this is quite interesting so here as you can see we've got a UART interface uh, UART TX and UART RX 
so transmit receive and that's why there is those two extra wires so it's the gray and blue one which presumably you can use for some sort of debugging or calibration and that protrudes over on the bottom of the battery I never wondered what that is but there you go there is a UART connection okay I removed all the 18 screws holding the metal frame to the board and uh, one screw holding the little board in place so now I should be able to lift the whole frame out and yeah, get rid of the plastic which has been made in two pieces um, that are identical actually and that's for ease of manufacturing as you can see when you put them side by side this is just a smaller mold that's punching them out so yeah clever okay and after turning around here is the board with the Bluetooth module which is just on a connector oh, and some sticky tape so we'll get to that later and have a look at the electronics and this board so there's uh, a few more screws holding everything together and also the load cells so I'm just going to remove all of them now and those screws of course are not uh, self tappers they're proper threaded screws but what's interesting as you can see they all of them have been loctited down so just so they don't unscrew um, in inside and start rattling about so again that's really nice uh, of them well thought of and as I'm taking this apart I need to desolder the wires that go to the load cells and remove them from the board because otherwise I won't be able to thread them through and here is everything taken out of the board as you can see left one of the load cells unconnected because I want to go a little bit further and see if we can see anything interesting on it but it's worth noting all the cables are not just standard cheapy cables they're in silicone uh, coated cables really really nice wires I'm really surprised how much thought and how much good quality has gone into this product which essentially is a toy I have not seen a single sign of bodgery on or cost saving everything is really nicely made let's let's see if this is tight uh, reasonably but it is coming out so this is just a plate connected to one side of the load cell again Loctite uh, this time a green one though uh, the other one was red and this is where the load cell sits and everything else is pressed so there is room for for the load cell essentially to bend here is the load cell and the second plate has got exactly the same pattern as the other one here is the load so and this is the interesting bit so from the outside it looks as a piece of metal piece of aluminium maybe fairly light it does weigh a little bit but uh, it definitely does not feel like um, steel and it's got that aluminium sort of look so yeah and there is four wires going in and there is a tape wrapped around it let's get the tape removed and see what's underneath normally those load cells operate in a bridge configuration with so there will be four sorry three resistors and one of them would be a resistive sensor stress or tension sensor which uh, changes its property in a bridge and then by measuring that you can measure the amount of stress or force on a, on on the item okay this is interesting so let's try to get a little bit closer here is what I'm seeing really close up and as you can see there's four wires and a tiny little tiny little structure which has been glued on to the metal and there's the same one on the other side I'm just using a diode as a pointer because it's so small I'm not sure whether those two cells those brown rectangles are two separate structures or if those are connectors and there is another one uh, another form of connection for them uh, underneath connecting them so it would be like a strip this long so this uh, little object is sensing the formation of the metal when it's under load effectively let's try to measure this up I'm going to measure now between green and red and we get precisely 550 ohms white and red 734 
and blue and red 550 ohms 549 so close enough um, so from red to white was a little bit more but if I check from green to blue okay that's 734 as well green to white 551 and 550 to red okay so this is um, connected uh, this whole thing is connected in a bridge um, like I said before so let's let me draw this up okay screw the drawing uh, here we go already schematic of what it looks like of course the resistances on here are different we've got 550 ohms instead of 1k yeah what it looks like two of them the are 550k reference and two of them would be active that's why maybe we've got those two structures that look here similar and those would be two active um, transducers that help us to translate the formation of the bl metal block into some electrical value this would get voltage across this and the voltage across those points across would vary depending on the amount of deformation let's get this tested so here is the setup i've got this in the vise um, just not squeezed very much right now um, just so it's in place i can still wiggle it out and i've connected power supply across one of the pairs um, that show the higher resistance so i don't think it actually matters which one you choose so i've chose the red and white one and that was showing sub about 700 uh, ohms resistance and uh, the blue and green also shows about 700 but i've chose to apply power to those two and i've got a multimeter on 200 millivolts on the other one let's see how much voltage we get um, on this i'm applying one volt there we go 1.1 volt to be precise and we get well almost nothing but if we squeeze this let me just make sure i'm out we start we should start seeing the bridge go out of balance as you can see it's gone to well, 0.2 so 200 microvolts uh, positive whereas without the load it was a little bit of balance so technically when if this was super precise it should be balanced enough to actually show zero voltage across the bridge because you're applying on the the voltage on the two diagonal the voltage point across the bridge should be identical those there should be zero voltage difference well, when you start deforming the the bridge itself the resistance uh, two resistances one leading to Oh, screw it schematic so here if you look at this if there is voltage across over here what we have the path let me get this bigger there we go so if this was positive and negative and the path of the current would be through here and through here so if those are identical this should be at 2.5 point, uh, point if there is a volt across this should be at 2.5 volts precisely and so is this so if you measure this voltage across it should be precisely zero that's provided everything's perfectly trimmed and so on but if you start deforming this and those two elements are active so you've got this one and this one are active so let's say the resistance of those decreases so it becomes smaller this is not working well so the voltage drop over here on the active component would get smaller so it would get pulled towards the negative so it would be to, wouldn't be 0.5 maybe 0.4 of a volt and same over here but in this instance it would get pulled towards the positive so any changes in those two if, as long as those are the same type of changes they will amplify the the difference so this sort of configuration is very sensitive but over here what we're seeing is without the load we've got 400 microvolts of voltage drop which is very little and that's at one volt so maybe if i increase the voltage a little bit i don't want to i'm not sure what voltage this should run on but maybe i can do it up to two three volts negative 1.3 millivolts drop across the bridge so i start squeezing it down and you can see as i'm applying force to it 
it really steadily drops down and all the way to it will go into positive so we've got 0.9 of a micro volt 0.9 of a millivolt up we can even squeeze a little bit harder there we go that's 1.1 so this is clearly designed for um, high load high high tension um, I guess so, yeah that's how it works and it's a really neat way of measuring weight or stress of those kind of forces this is how most electronic scales work on a bigger scale the I guess what I mean large scales like you see when in a in a shipyard or um, those sort of places uh, those use load cells like this small little kitchen electronic scales often work on different principle uh, it could be this but it also could be some sort of capacitive sensor and yeah all sorts of other things whatever's cheaper but um, this um, is a very common way of doing that sort of measurement and uh, I can even use my hand look if I squeeze it yeah works so that's a load so and that's how you can use it now if there is a little bit of uh, misalignment um, in a load so they are probably uh, just trimming it off in software resetting it to zero or um, whatever that might be every time you switch on the board it goes through some sort of calibration procedure and basically does a relative measurement uh, to make it easy and that's another way to do it so quite simple and here is the board overview so we've got the four inputs from the load cells and some passive components just literally a, a couple of resistors on each channel and then the, those to go to this chip and those to go to this chip and this chip has got a marking 8A OBAQ which um, is an op amp and it would make sense that it's an op amp because you saw what tiny little um, difference uh, the, the load cells produce uh, what tiny little voltage so that needs to get amplified and those those are CMOS uh, amplifiers um, OPA two double two triple three um, here's the data sheet so it's a, a micro power 1.8 volt micro power zero drift series amplifiers from Texas Instruments and yeah we've got the OBAQ which is the MSOP 8 package which fits the bill that's exactly what it is and the next chip over here and those are no surprise analog to digital converters ADS1222 um, also from TI here's a brief look at the data sheet and the uh, Delta Sigma analog to digital converters two channels we've got two chips like that four channels in total which uh, makes sense we've got four load cells um, on on the board so this gets converted into digital signals and go to the main processor chip now there is a clear division over here also on the back even though there isn't many components there is a clear division over here this side to this side so that's the analog and that's the digital side so everything on this side is uh, happening analogy and it goes to digital mode after the A to D converters and everything else in here is just logic and the main processor what have we got is um, WBCRVL412847KM and I'm not able to get any reasonable data sheet on this uh, processor here it's probably a custom jobby or a uh, program that factory and with just custom markings on it thinking about it there is a WBC RVL and the board description is CRVL which uh, again would dedicate this is a custom description for this board so no data sheet on this unfortunately and the last thing is the little Bluetooth module glued of a double-sided tape so it's a little bit difficult to remove but we're not going to see much in there it's a standard Bluetooth module J27 H007 the other board the little one nothing special on here it's just a piece of PCB the cheap stuff 
paper type resin and this one is glass fiber so this is FR4 this is just a cheap job for the battery connector and only the hidden UART ports on here so there you go thank you very much for watching I think that's it I'm going to keep it this way I'm not going to throw away those load cells uh, I will definitely keep them uh, for something I'm not sure what but I know this will, stuff will come handy it's uh, yeah cool stuff I hope you enjoyed the video I hope you enjoyed me waffling on about uh, what I see in there and yeah please do subscribe for more random electronics related stuff for this video that's it so as always, take care.